going from Colorado to Texas to talk to Shannon. Hey, Shannon, what's going on down there in hot and steamy Texas? It is hot and steamy, Dr. Glidden. I have two two different concerns. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, loud and clear. Okay. One is a lady that I'm working with. Um, there's several different concerns. Um, she has diabetes. Um, she's, the doctors have put her on about 14 different medications, including a statin drug. And so I know how to deal with the basics with the cholesterol, um, with the diabetes. But something else that she gets that I have no idea um, that I need your help with is she gets shots in her stomach because her body does not make blood. So her last report showed um, the numbers are supposed to be between 12 and 16, and she's at a at a nine. Um, she's recently stopped those shots, uh, and so I don't I don't I don't know why. But this is something that her her grandfather did not make blood. Her parents, her mom did not make blood, and and her sister, and she has the same thing. What is that? Well, I don't know. There can be there. There's probably some, you know, von Willenbrand's hemochromatosis or hemophilia or some crazy long medical name. It doesn't matter, right? Because yeah. what we do in every instance is eliminate the ten bad foods, give the body the ninety essential nutrients appropriate for body weight, uh, increase your up the ante with your antioxidants. And then a couple of extra add-ons, depending on what it is we're trying to support and promote. Now, in this case, we're trying to support and promote the production of blood. Blood production happens in the bone marrow. When the bone marrow becomes infiltrated with connective tissue, it stops producing blood because there ain't no more bone marrow. It's connective tissue instead of bone marrow. One of the reasons that bone marrow ostensibly anyway, becomes infiltrated with connective tissue is because the bones are running out of the nutrients they need to maintain their integrity. So I would approach this the same way that I would approach arthritis. So I would do extra calcium, glucogel, and selenium. I would do okay. extra calcium, glucogel, and selenium, and I would do that for six months. If this is a lifelong thing, and I have no idea about the familial thing. Um, I doubt very much that this is a genetically inherited disorder. It's probably a nutritional deficiency disorder that's been passed along. And, you know, because the family eats the same and they cook the same, and right. what you can do is inherit, you know, everybody's body has a weak link. You know, there are over 270 illnesses caused by not enough calcium, right? right. But So that's why 10, you could have... You know, uh, 10 people who live in the same neighborhood, they all were born on the same day into different families. They each have calcium deficiencies, and they each have a different illness. Well, why did this one person get arthritis, and their next-door neighbor got high blood pressure, and their neighbor across the street got ringing in the ears? Well, nobody knows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, without trying to overthink this or, like, you know, get too hyper-involved here uh, from a yeah. pathophysiological point of view, just for six months, give her uh, more glucogel, more calcium, and selenium appropriate for her body weight and see what happens. And also look to see, by the way, if she has other calcium deficiency things, right, like high blood pressure or bad menstrual cramps or twitching muscles or chronic low back pain or arthritis, right, you know, inability to fall asleep. You know the rundown. Look yeah. to see if she has other calcium deficiency diseases. Heartburn, I mean, is the easiest. And I bet you're going to be surprised that she's going to have more than one. Uh, the, the, the deal here is to support her bone marrow, and we do that by supporting her bones. Sound like a good idea, Shannon? Yes. One question about the glucogel, because I have several people that I'm dealing with arthritis, and they're also diagnosed with gout, and so I'm trying to get away from shellfish. Is the, uh, and I thought that the liquid glucogel was a shellfish-free product, but recently someone got in touch with me and said they read on their bottle that it isn't? Well, so there's a difference uh, between OsteoFX Plus and mm -hmm. Beyond OsteoFX Plus. Now, the Beyond OsteoFX Plus is shellfish-free. 
the Osteo FX Plus is not. So it has to say Beyond Osteo FX mm-hmm. Plus. And the Beyond Osteo FX Plus comes in two forms. It's a liquid form and the new powdered form. So mm-hmm. either the new powdered form of Beyond Osteo FX Plus or the Beyond Osteo FX Plus liquid are shellfish free. However, if it just says Osteo FX Plus, there's shellfish in it. So that's the distinction there. Thanks for the call, now, Shannon. I- We're up against the break. Uh, hang on. I'll, I'll take the next question on the other side. Mm-hmm. 